Hello and welcome back to Ready Steady DIY. Well, if you have ever found yourself in the shower, staring at your shower curtain, wondering about those metal holes that are at the top of it, what they are and how they got there, then today's episode is for you. Today we're going to go over grommets, what they are, how they work, and how to install one. It's way easier than it looks. So if you're down with that, let's get started. <laughs> grommets, eyelets, that might not sound interesting. But believe you me, grommets or eyelets somehow find their way into your life one way or another. Whether you're talking about doing up your shoes, or tying down a tarp, or securing your boat cover, somehow, some way, you've probably got some fabric with a hole in it that has sash, rope, a lace, something passing through that hole that could potentially rip the hole. So grommets or eyelets get used in order to reinforce that hole and make sure it doesn't rip. Grommets and eyelets look pretty similar. Eyelets start out as one piece. Grommets start out as two pieces. Eyelets are usually smaller and more decorative. Grommets are usually larger and used for more heavy duty applications. Both get inserted into the hole and then usually pressed down with a press or hit with a hammer in order to cause flaring so that it grabs on and holds to the fabric. In my line of work, the grommet we most use is the spur grommet. You find that on all sorts of film and television fabrics. They're all around the edge of fabric that's usually reinforced with webbing. The grommets get tapped into that webbing and then sash is attached so that you can tie the fabric to a frame and use it to diffuse light or bounce light or do whatever you want. If you've ever been camping, you've probably had a tarp with you. They usually have grommets pressed into them. And if you're not into any of that, you've probably got shoes. <laughs> And shoes use eyelets quite often to keep the lace from ripping through the canvas or the leather or whatever the shoe is made of. If you can install a grommet, you can put a solid hole in anything and then use that hole to tie that thing down. It takes a few special tools to be able to grommet, but once you learn how to do it, it's not hard. Today, I'm just gonna put a number four spur grommet into some webbing for you to show you how it works. So today for this demonstration, I put together a few things. As you can see in the back there, I've got some one and a half inch black webbing which I will be installing the grommet in. The grommets that I use are typical to my industry. They're number four spur grommets. You can see those sitting there, they're in two pieces. There's a male piece which has the shaft and a female piece which has the spurs. So these particular spur grommets have a 9 16 inner diameter and a 1.12 inch outer diameter. It has a shaft length of 0 0.320 inches, which is pretty long for a grommet. That means it can grab thicker fabric. These are the black on brass variety. These are a pretty heavy duty variety, but they're a little easier to set in than the stainless steel grommet. Because I'm using number four spur grommets, I have to use a number four set of tools designed for number four spur grommets in order to put them in. First thing you'll see sitting there is the 9 16 hole cutter. That will create a hole in the webbing that is 9 16 in diameter, which is exactly right for the inner diameter of the number four spur grommet. After I make the hole with the hole cutter, I'll use the other two tools, the punch and the die, which are designed to accept and install number four spur grommets. It says right on them. To do all this, I'll need a little surface to work on. As you can see, the surface I usually work on is a bench top that has horse stall mat that I set into the top of it. That's not bad, but it has a little bit of give to it because I don't use exactly the right mallet. I find it's easier to just work off of wood. It doesn't seem to do too much damage to my hole cutter and I can still make holes pretty well through multiple layers of webbing if I need. If you wanna protect the sharp edge of the hole cutter, you would use something softer. A lot of people like to use nylon, but the company that made these tools, CS Osborne, when they send out a package kit for beginners, they often send it out with a little piece of wood to work on. So I took that tip and I just use wood. This set is a, a hardened set. It's a professional set. It's a little bit more expensive. If you wanted to get into grommeting, but you weren't sure you wanted the full expense of the hole cutter and both the punch and the die, then you could technically forego the hole cutter and just use a little box cutter. I, I put a little Olfa knife in this shot just so you could see. It's really hard to cut through webbing with an Olfa knife, at least accurately. The hole punch makes it way, way, way easier. And lastly, you can see my hammer there. This is a bigger than average hammer. You can use a standard 16 ounce hammer. It's not recommended because the head is so much smaller and so much lighter. A bigger, heavier head is gonna make it a lot easier to set the grommet perfectly with just a couple of strikes or maybe even one. The best mallets, mallets like the Barry King mallet that Sailrite sells, have about a three pound head and a really, really wide face. It's nearly impossible to miss. <laughs> But those are really expensive. They're beautiful. They look like centerpieces for your dining room table, but I don't have one of those. I just make do with this three pound hammer. It was cheap and available and it works. Obviously, you just wanna be really careful with your fingers. 
So first thing you do when you're trying to put in a grommet, you take your material, whatever it is. In this case, I'm using some black webbing. I'm using that because in my business, that's typically what you find sewn into the edge of the fabrics that we often grommet. It reinforces the fabric so the grommet can really bite in. And when you tie the fabric down, it doesn't go anywhere. I suppose technically you could sew this into your tarp to reinforce the edges before you grommet that. It would make it way stronger than just folding over the vinyl or the poly or whatever your tarp is made of. Sometimes on tarps, you find pieces of plastic in the corners where you know you're really gonna re down and there's going to be a lot more force put on that grommet. It's a drag when they rip out so the more you can reinforce it the better. So I've got my little piece of wood here and I put my piece of webbing down on that piece of wood and then I figure out where I want my hole and I bring the hole punch up to that position. In terms of PPE at this point, I'm wearing ear protection and eye protection. It may be hyper vigilant, I don't know. I don't want a little piece of my hole cutter flying off when my hammer hits it and hitting me in the eye. And it's also pretty loud, so I don't want to hurt my hearing. I'm wearing ear protection and eye protection while I do this. I am also being careful not to hit my fingers with the hammer. Because I'm using a three pound hammer, just one, two, maybe three times, and the hole punch is gonna go right through. You wanna be careful on the kind of wood you choose to go underneath. A really hard surface under your material could, I suppose, dull the cutting edge of the hole cutter and make it harder to cut holes in the future. I've been using maple plywood for years. These tools are really old. These are probably 10 year old tools. Still going strong. So I've got a perfect hole that's designed in diameter to fit perfectly over the shaft of the grommet. I pull out my die which is designed to take a number four spur grommet. I take out the male part of that spur grommet, which has the long shaft on it, and I put it face up on the die. I fit my fabric over top of that. The hole is perfect, so it snugly fits right over the shaft. Then I take the spur part of the grommet, flip its spurs down, and line it all up. Then I take the punch, which inserts into the spur grommet and down into the hole of the die, and give it a couple of good taps. The spur grommet, being made of a softer metal, brushes into itself and the spurs bite into the fabric. That means the grommet can't spin when it's inserted into the webbing. Plain grommets don't have the spurs, and technically, even if you set them in really well, they could spin in the hole. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. In my business, we use spur grommets because they're just more secure. One thing of note, these spur grommets are pretty heavy duty. You're not gonna just cut them out. Once you put them in, they're probably in for the life of the material. So you wanna be sure before you do it. So once I've hit the punch a couple of times, I can pull the grommet off and take a look. You can see that it's laid in really well. No part did not crush into the fabric properly. It's flat, it's in there, it's not going anywhere. So now if I wanted to tie this down somehow with some sash cord, a little rope, a leather tie, whatever I wanted, the grommet is gonna protect the webbing and make sure it doesn't rip. Perfect job. If I pulled the grommeted material off the die and thought I hadn't done a perfect job, you can fix that really easily. You just reassemble the whole thing, put the grommet back down on the die, reinsert the punch, give it another tap. Nothing's stopping you from making it perfect. And that's how easy it is to install a spur grommet. The first time I learned, I was kind of shocked. It seems like something that should be harder, but it's actually quite easy. Like a lot of things you can do in your house, this is one of those. So if you need to put a grommet into anything, now you know how. And as they say, knowing is half the battle. So I hope that helped you out. Please feel free to like or subscribe if it did. If not, please feel free to leave a question or a comment in the comment section. All that kind of thing helps me make the channel better, and that's what I'm after. Until next week, take care, and happy grommeting.